You will hear much more about summer camp uh, next week. The rest of the team is even now traveling on their, they are on the highway in a bus going towards Chengdu right now and volunteers as well and others they'll be traveling by train and other ways to get back um, so we do keep them keep them in your thoughts and prayers that it will be safe and smooth as they as they return to Hong Kong or to whatever whichever city it's from Kunming and, and Wuhan and Guangzhou and other places as well so <clears throat> but for us we are here this morning you didn't think you're gonna have both pastors here this morning did you you thought there was just going to be one pastor here. You got both of us, like it or not. <laughs> okay, you've got both of us. But this morning we turn to the Word of God, and we're going to begin by looking at the life, uh, something from the life of, of uh, one of the main characters of the Old Testament uh, that will help us with our own lives as well. So I want to ask you a question this morning before we get into the message. How many of you have in the past or even now you are facing a situation or you are in a circumstance, you're in circumstances that you just don't understand. You just don't understand. And maybe you have said why to God. You may have said God, you may have said God, I want an explanation for this. I want to know why. Explain it. I'm your child. I don't think I'm living in sin. I'm not being disobedient. Why is this in my life right now? Or why is my family going through this? Or why has this happened to me? Um, and we, we often we say why, or we say why not, or we say why me, yeah? Why me? Because I've been good and I've obeyed. Why not let this happen to somebody bad who, that, that caused all the trouble instead of me? And... Um, I don't want to make light of I don't want to make light at all of this, but I do believe that every one of us as Christians, as children of God, we are going to face questions like this. We may at times come into situations, it may be a sudden thing, it may be a short thing, it may be a disappointment or an or God, I don't understand this. God, you could have done this and you didn't do that. It may be something short of short time. It may be for some of us, it may be something that has gone on for a long time. And some of us are facing that, aren't we? We have been in situations that we've been facing for a long time. And we've prayed about it for a long time. And yet, the circumstances have not changed. And it seems that God has not answered us. Or maybe God has given us an answer that we don't like. And we think, God, why did you give me that answer? You could have given me a better answer. You could have done something differently. And what I want to say to you this morning, first of all, is this. Any Christian that tells you, God answers all my prayers, God hears me, I, are, I, I have everything, he always answers me, is not telling the truth. That's not true. The, we have examples, we have strong examples in God's word that tell us otherwise and that show us otherwise, number one. But the other part of it is this, because God loves us and because we belong to him and at some point in our lives we have said, God, you are my God, my life is yours. Because you and I have made that decision in our lives and I'm, I'm looking at the group that's here this morning and I think, I'm just looking around, yep, uh, I know you all. And unless there's something really secret in your life uh, that I don't know, that I really don't know about, we are children of God here this morning. And what I want to say to you is this, that though everybody faces these things, God, also because he's our father and because he loves us, God points us to his word. And in his word, God gives us something this morning, today, now that will help us when we face unanswered questions, when we face injustice that does not change, when we face situations that we do not understand, when it seems that God is silent and does not give answers, when it seems that God does not move his hand to do something that would be good and, and it would be so easy for him to. And we think, God, 
You could so easily change this. You could so easily heal. You could so easily restore. You could so easily move their hearts, open that door, and you haven't. Why haven't you? But God turns us to his word, and in his word, we find things to help us. Notice that I've not said we find answers, because I have found, and as we're going to look at this morning, and next week as well, God does not always give us answers. He really doesn't. God does not always give us explanations. I don't know about you, but I always want an explanation when, when I don't understand. Do you? Or are you very content just to live with, I don't understand and I don't know why, but it's okay, God. That's very hard for us, isn't it? It's very hard for us. And again, as I said, I, I'm not making light of it. But I do believe God gives us something in his word that will help us. And for me personally, um, within this last week, and actually within these last, this last month and this last year or so, there have been some things that I have faced, some things that I'm praying about, that God has not given me an answer to, or he's not given a satisfactory answer to. And there's some things I don't understand, and I'm still grappling with it, and I'm still dealing with it in my own heart. And at, in this last week, God has brought me to some of these passages. And I think also, and if you talked with Pastor Renee, I think he would tell you the same thing. I do believe sometimes God lets the people who lead you spiritually, God lets your pastors face things and go through things that you face as well, but perhaps at times even more deeply or even harder or, or whatever, because your shepherds, your under shepherds, Jesus is the chief shepherd, and we know that Jesus went through it, don't we? We know that Jesus went through it. But our words and our preaching and our prayers for you would be very shallow indeed if we too had not gone through some of the things that some of you are facing as well. And God takes us through these things. And that's how God has brought me to this message this morning as I've been preparing. And so we're going to look at some things this morning. And we're going to look at Abraham this morning. Um, in the, I, I think almost everyone, unless you want to be argumentative, I think almost everyone would agree that the central the, the, the standout figure of the Old Testament is Abraham. Now, David was great, Elijah, uh, Joseph, and there are others as well. But if we look at the Old Testament in general, the standout character of the Old Testament is Abraham. If we go to the New Testament, now we uh, exclude our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Um, but if we if we look at the New Testament, then in the New Testament, there's also a character or a figure. Who would you say in the New Testament? There you go. That's right. Paul. So Old Testament, Abraham. New Testament, Paul. And next week, we're going to look at Paul as well and something in his life as well. So these two, and I think it's no surprise, brothers and sisters, that the two main characters, the standout characters of both the Old Testament and the New Testament faced things that they could not understand, prayed for something that God did not do and never did do in their lives, gave an answer to prayer that was not the answer they wanted, that they faced things they could not figure out and they could not understand. And I think, first of all, it's because God was working in them in the same way he works in us. And I think, second of all, God let these men go through things for your sake and for my sake. I believe that. And you say, well, I don't know about, Pastor, I don't know about that, Pastor Jennifer. I do. There's a scriptural foundation for that in 2 Corinthians Paul writes to the Corinthian church and he talks about the God of all comfort and he says we went through these things so that and we received comfort that we that we and that you might comfort others who are going through the same thing with the same comfort you have received. So we have a scriptural basis for it as as they went through these things. As we go through these things, we receive from the Lord what we need, and here's the beautiful part about God, we receive not only enough for ourselves to heal us and help us in our circumstances, but to have something in our lives that is proven, that is tested, that is worthy, that is of value, that is then there 
for others who go through the same things. For me, if somebody comes up to me and pats me on the shoulder when I'm going through a hard time, God bless you, hope everything is okay, and I know that they have not faced some of the same things in their own lives, pfft, don't talk to me, and don't pat my shoulder either, <laughs> you know. Um, but when, when things, when, when we go through things and we have something to give others that we have proven in our own lives, then there's something and there's something of worth and value. And what I want to say to you is this this morning, brothers and sisters, whatever your age this morning, physically, and whatever your spiritual age, whenever you became a Christian, these truths this morning, these things, they are, they are applicable for every single one of us this morning. They really, really are. And so we're going to look this morning at the life of Abraham. And we're going to look at one event from the life of Abraham. There is much more to it than we're going to look at this morning, but we're going to look at it from just one angle this morning. And you might guess with me what that one event is in Abraham's life that is so hard to understand. How can this be? What event would that be? What do you think? You're scared to give the wrong answer. And those that were in the first service already know, so don't say anything, okay? Think about Abraham's life, all the things that he went through. And there were a lot of things that he didn't understand or he thought, well, what about this? But there was one that was really, really dramatic. Of all the things that were hard to understand, this was the hardest. What was it? The sacrifice of his son Isaac. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's found in Genesis 22. The life of Abraham begins in Genesis 11. His earthly life ends in Genesis 25. So this is found in Genesis 22. When we first meet Abraham, he's about 75 years old. So let's get the timing. Uh, older than anybody in... Sister Lisa, not qu quite as old as Sister Lisa. <laughs> Ma'am? But when we first meet him, he's about 75. Ah. And then when we come to this event... It is some time later than that, because when Abraham was 99, around then, that's when God said, about this time next year, you will have a son. You'll have Isaac. And then when we come to this event that is so hard to understand, in fact, as far as we know, we don't have exact knowledge, but it is likely by this time that Abraham has been walking with God for about 50 years because God called Abraham when he was about 75. It's probably when he's about 125 years old or so. So that tells you something also about the age of Isaac. We always think of Isaac as a little baby boy that is taken to the mountain and that as, as far as we know from scripture, as far as we can read, that is not so. Nevertheless, little boy or grown young man, this is a hard thing to understand. So let's look this morning, and let's look at Genesis 22, verses 1 and 2. Sometime later, God tested Abraham, and he said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Uh, you know, when we look at Abraham, uh, we look at this, and sometimes God speaks to us in our hearts, right? We, we, d we discern the voice of, of the Spirit in our hearts. But it's interesting to me when we look at this, this seems to imply something open and audible, doesn't it? It, it seems to. And so God said to Abraham, and Abraham said, here I am. God said, take your son, your only son. Wait a minute. Doesn't Abraham have more than one son? Who's the other son? Ishmael. Okay. So what is God saying here? Is God having a problem with addition here right now? Stay with me. Your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. God doesn't have a problem with addition here, but this was a, a Jewish, a Hebrew way of writing. Right here when it says your only son. And the, the meaning of it was, it was like your most precious son, the one that, that is closest to your heart, the dearest one to you. Now, Abraham loved Ishmael as well. Don't get, don't, don't get this wrong. Abraham loved Ishmael when he was sent away so that Isaac uh, would be the son of promise growing up in, in, uh, in the household of blessing. A Abraham asked God, he said, but what about Ishmael? Ishmael was his son. He loved him. But God was doing something special. And, and honestly, when we look at the life of Abraham, we know that in that particular situation, Abraham blew it with Hagar and Ishmael. He really did. He blew it. He tried to work out. God had promised him something, and he tried to work out God's answer 
for God's promise in his life. And we are still living with the ill effects of that even today, with the, uh, with the enmity between Arabs and Jews. That stems all the way back to that time. Brothers and sisters, when we try to work out God's answer for our lives, we can get in the biggest trouble. We really can. God still loves us, but we can heap trouble on ourselves when we try to do that. As we learn from Abraham, we learn great things from him, but we learn some other things as well, don't we? How not to do it, right? How not to do it. But anyhow, God speaks to him and he says, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. This sounds a lot like God's first call to Abraham, doesn't it? Do you remember how God first called Abraham? God had said to Ab at that time his name was Abram, not yet Abraham. God said to Abram, he called him and he said, follow me and go to a place that I will show you. God didn't tell him everything when it first started out. And we see something here that's a little bit similar. God doesn't tell him everything at the beginning. God does not explain. If God would explain, it would be so much easier for us, wouldn't it? We'd take God's explanation. We'd put it in our pocket. And we'd say, now I can make it through now that I understand. I have found God seldom does that in the beginning and as we go through something. But God says to him, go there and I will show you the place. So it's very much like God's first call to Abraham, which to me speaks of a great step of obedience and trust and faith in the life of Abraham. Now there were many things that God called Abraham to do that required steps of faith, just as there are in our lives as well. But we see something in these two that were really, that were, that were big things, that were big things. And this particular call actually comes right in the middle of God, uh, of Abraham's life as he, walk, as he walks with God. If you go to Genesis 25, you'll find out that Abraham lived about 175 years. So God calls him when he's 75. He dies when he's 175. And this call comes right about in the middle of it, right about in the middle. And so we're going to look at that a little bit later. I don't know about you, but I have, and you say, are you sure about that timing? Yes. <laughs> As far as we know, you say, but where does it say that in Bible? Another time we'll get into all of that. We're not going to get into it this morning because we're, we're looking at a lot of other things. So, so, if you, so, so don't let your brain start going that way. Let's stay with this. this, stay, this stay with this right now. We can, we, I, I'm happy to look at the word with you and answer some other questions at another time. But I want to ask you something this morning as we look at this. And I want to ask you in the light of your own life and in the light of some questions and some things that you don't understand about your life and your situation. This story is an extremely dramatic story. It's one of the most dramatic stories of the Old Testament. And yet, as we look at Genesis 22, do we read anything about what's going on inside Abraham's heart? Does it say what Abraham is feeling or what he's thinking? Not at all. But we can imagine, can't we? Because Abraham was a person. Abraham was a father. Abraham was someone who had waited a long time for God's answer. And the answer had finally come. And then this happens. How can this be God? How can this be good? How can this have God's handprint on it in any way? Now, I don't know about you, but I have faced things before where I have asked God those questions. Have you asked God those questions? God where are you? God, how can this be you? God, how can this be good? All of us at times have faced things and prayed for things and we thought, God, you could answer this prayer so easily. Why don't you? How can it be bad to answer this prayer? How can it be bad for you to do something? It can only be good. Have you ever felt that way? I have. I have when I've asked God to do something. When, when I have asked God and begged God, God, please heal my mother's eyesight. I can't tell you the hours I've spent praying for that. How can it be a bad thing that my mother who has given her life to you should, go, sh should not receive her eyesight back? And instead, should the course of things go on, she is legally blind now and will be blind unless things change. And, don't, and you can't say, well, you just don't have enough faith. Pastor Jennifer, hogwash. I have faith. I have persevered. I've asked God. But this sermon is not about me. It's about all of us. And you have asked God some of those same things as well, haven't you? 
Have you not? And you may have some of those questions in your heart right now. God, I don't understand. And there may be times when these questions stay in our heart, when it is a struggle not to let bitterness grow in our heart against God and not to get a little bit angry with God. God, why haven't you? God, why don't you? God, why won't you? Why won't you? And Abraham shows us why. Abraham gives us an example that we can follow. Now, you and I have not been called to sacrifice a physical child of ours. That was a different, there was a, something different going on. Don't get upset about, how could God ask for murder? There are all sorts of reasons for that. So don't let your mind go that way this morning. Instead, we're looking at some specific things. But all of us have faced something like this. And Abraham shows us a way through. He shows us a way through. So, how can this be good? And all of us have that question, right? All of us have that question. God, how can this be good? God, my prayer, if you will answer my prayer, it will be better. Have you ever, have you ever told God that? I have. Laugh. Thank you, Brother Bonac, because we both prayed that, haven't we? God, this is, a good, this is a good thing to do. As if God doesn't know these things, right? And so we look, as we look at this, and we consider how Abraham... We consider how Abraham went through this, but we're not going to look from Abraham's perspective first. We're going to look from our own, and we're going to um, look at some verses. But I want to say something first as we, get into, as we get into this part of it, and you're going to understand something that you didn't know before. It's a secret that I told the first, that I told the, uh, uh, first service, and almost nobody knew it. Last week, as we were preparing to go to camp, uh, lest you think, Pastor Jennifer, it's easy for you to say, you don't know some of the things I'm going through. Last week, as we were preparing to go to camp, it was such a busy time, and we had done some of our packing, but then Saturday evening, we went back, and uh, we began to gather all of our final things for the camp. We knew we'd be leaving early the next morning. I had everything packed, and then I started gathering all of my paperwork, and I knew where everything was, because it wasn't that long ago that we came back from uh, the medical mission in the Philippines, so I had all my paperwork, I had my pack, I had my money, I had my insurance card, I had all those things that I'd put on my desk, along with my passport and all of that. And as I went back Saturday night, I looked and my passport was gone. Gone. Now, I don't know about you, but I can tell you something about China. China will lot, would not let me go into their country if without a passport, for sure. And so I looked and I kept on looking and I didn't find it. And, but I was already telling God, but God, you can make it appear because I know it's here. This is where I put it. And, and God, you could just make it appear on my desk because God did something like that for me one time. I mean, we kind of laugh. He did that one time many years ago for me as a teenager. He put something in a place it had not been so that I could find it. How miraculous. So, of course, if God did it one time, he could do it again, couldn't he? And I thought, Lord, when I wake up, my passport could be on my desk. But I'll tell you something else. As I was looking... I could not pray, oh, God, defeat the devil. But that's what we want to pray, right? How many times do we, and, and, and believe me, that is one of the prayers that we pray at times because the enemy does work in our lives. He does. And there are times that the Holy Spirit prompts us to defeat the devil. Lord, stop the work of the enemy. And that is, that is a valid prayer and a scriptural prayer. Do you know that as I was looking for my passport, the Holy Spirit would not let me pray that prayer. He would not let me pray, Lord, bind the enemy's hands so that I could find that passport and, and whatever. He wouldn't let me do that. And as I was praying, the voice, I didn't hear anything audibly, but it came to my heart and I knew it was God, the growing conviction, Jennifer, you are not going to find your passport and you are not going to China tomorrow. And I was pretty sure it was God's voice. Just as surely as Abraham heard God's voice that said, Abraham, and Abraham said, here I am. And God said, take Isaac, your only son, and take him to Mount Moriah to the place I'll show you and sacrifice him. The growing conviction came in my heart. You're not going, you're not, you're not going to find your passport and you're not going. Because you see, in the meantime, I was already thinking, well, if I can't find it right now, I'll get it by Monday and then I can zip up there and I can... I had all sorts of plans. I could figure it out. Some, I could make it work in some way. As we all do, as we all do, when we face tough situations that we can't understand and we're trying to make it work. Because it's a good thing. It's a good thing. 
I'd called mom and dad in the States. I said, please pray, I can't find my passport. So mom and dad were just praying, 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 praying in America. And when I talked with them, I called them the next morning and I said, I can't find my passport, I'm not going. And they had called a very dear friend, a retired missionary, a uh, very close friend of theirs from Bible school, and she was praying too. And when I talked with them, uh, not the next morning, but a day or two after that, when you all thought I was in Sichuan teaching English to the kids, like Pastor Renee got to, and I didn't. <laughs> I talked with mom and dad. I could not understand, but I, I felt it was the Lord. And, the, and you know what else the Lord said? The Lord also said, you keep your mouth shut about this for this week. You keep your mouth shut. Really, keep it shut. And I was like, okay, Lord. And when I talked with my parents, my parents said as they were praying, they had started out saying, oh, God, oh, Holy Spirit, let her eyes go to the passport. Let her bring her hand to it and whatever. And mom and dad both said in the middle of praying, the Holy Spirit changed their prayer, both of them as they were praying. And their prayer became... Oh God, let your will be done. Oh God, let your will be done. They called the dear friend who was also praying and she said, the strangest thing, she said, I was praying for Jennifer to find her passport. And while I was in the middle of praying, she said, the Holy Spirit stopped me and said, you are praying the wrong prayer. That's right. You pray for my will to be done. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it was a confirmation. This was the Lord. And so I shared that. That was the impetus. But as, again, this sermon is not about me. It's, a, it's about all of us as we face these things. And so we look at Abraham, and Abraham knew it was God. And brothers and sisters, there are times when we know and we see it's God. Now, some of you this morning are going to say, yes, but what if it's not God? I don't think it's God. Hang on, because next week we're going to look at Paul. And Paul is going to pray a prayer, and it's going to be the devil or whatever, and God is going to say something. So that covers you next week if this, if this is not applicable to you. But all of, us, all of us have faced the place where, okay, God, I see you in this and I don't understand. And I want us to look at two verses very quickly that will help us begin to understand what God is doing sometimes that will help us in our own situations. Let's look at these two. Look, first of all, at the verse we just read. And it says, sometime later, God tested Abraham. And then in Hebrews eleven seventeen, by faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. And so my question to you is this. In these two verses, there's one word that stands out. What is that word? There's one word. What is it? Tested. The word is tested. And we see it. These two verses are probably, they were inspired by the Holy Spirit, let me think, probably 1,500 years apart, roughly, roughly, 1,500 years apart, and the word is used at the same time, both times in relation to, to Abraham. And so what we see here is this, in this impossible to make sense of situation, God was testing Abraham, not to make him sin, not to make him stumble, but God was doing something that Abraham didn't see and couldn't understand. And what I want to say to you is this this morning. There are times often in our lives, I think usually in our lives, when you and I face something and we say, God, I don't understand, and God does not give an explanation, and you've been praying about something, I would suggest and I would, I would say that almost always God is allowing something for you to go through as a test of your heart and, in, and of your life. Not because he, he's hard or harsh, not because he doesn't love you, not because he doesn't care, not because he's not listening to your prayer, but because he loves you and wants to bless you and me and wants to do something in our lives. He himself... God himself lets us go through times of testing, and we see it here. And he doesn't always give an answer. Don't you wish that when God's going to let you go through a test, don't you wish that God would say to you, would announce it beforehand, as our professors did in school and university. Take out your pens and paper. Oh, when my professor would say that, and I hadn't studied the night before, and it was a pop test. I don't know what you call it in your own countries. Do you call it a pop test? or a pop quiz, that's what we call it, called it in the States. Oh, and if I wasn't, 
And if I wasn't prepared, <laughs> but usually we're prepared for a test, aren't we? We've studied, we're all ready, we've got all the answers. Brothers and sisters in the Christian life, God does not do it that way. And you and I go through things we don't understand. And we get in situations where there's no open door. There's not even an open window. There's not even a crack in the window. And there are times that God takes us through and it's testing. And it's testing. And we don't see it and we don't realize it. If we knew it was a test from God, you know what we would do? We would miss the benefit of it, wouldn't we? We'd sit back and we'd say, whew, whew. It's just a test. The devil, it's true. It's just a test. Now tests are tough, but we, eh, does this make sense to us this morning? I'm, I'm not trying to be, this is very practical. It really is this way. And if we knew it's a test, then we would know, okay, God's got this. It's just a test. You know, in my country, in the United States, um, I, I live in an area where there are a lot of tornadoes and you sometimes see them on American news or whatever. And uh, they would, uh, they would come on the radio at times, on the car radio, and it, they would always announce, this is, uh, this is just a test. They would say that. Do they do that in your home countries? This is a test. This is the test of the emer emergency management system. And then you'd hear a beep for about 10 or 15 seconds. And then after it, they would say, this was only a test. In the event of a real emergency, you should do this, 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 and this. But we were warned beforehand. It was a test. And so you know what? It was just a test, and so we didn't take it very seriously. We didn't, because it's just a test in that sense. And I believe God works with us in the same way in our lives. And so he doesn't tell us it's a test. And in fact, you and I go through not understanding, not getting an answer to our prayers, and not getting an explanation, and we're trying to figure out, God, is this you or the devil, right? And usually we think it's the devil, right? It's the devil, and we're trying to muddle our way through, and we're trying to figure it out. And God, who loves us, doesn't give an answer, as he did not give to Abraham. And we go through it, and we get beyond it, and sometimes we look back. Often we will look back and we'll say, Oh, God, that was a test. You were testing me, not so that I would fail, but you were proving my heart. Next week we'll talk a little bit about why sometimes God lets us go through tests. But it's very, very clear. It proves our hearts. It purifies our hearts. It keeps us from sin. Things like that. And we'll look at that next week. But a lot of times it's only when we look back that we see, God, you were testing me. And sometimes we pass and sometimes we don't, right? How many of you have ever failed a test before? I have. I have. The good thing about a test is when we have passed it encourages us and it builds our foundation in faith. The good thing about a test when you and I fail is it reminds us we cannot depend on ourselves and it should draw us closer to Jesus so that we depend on him instead. So God doesn't tell Abraham it's a test, but it is a test. Now how is Abraham going to go through something that he doesn't understand? And how are we going to go through? Let's look at the verses that come next. The next morning, Abraham got up early. Ouch! Now that just looks like a simple little verse to you, but may I say to you, there's a whole lesson in that one sentence, isn't there? How many of us, when God has asked something of us, called for something of us that is not easy, and at this point we're pretty sure it's God's call, and we're pretty sure it's going to be a sacrifice on our part, and it's kind of painful to us, how many of us prevaricate and slow down and think about it for a while and try to decide, is there an easier way to get through this and to do less than what God is asking of me? Don't raise your hands, but probably all of us have done that before. May we learn something from Abraham this morning? Abraham does what? Got up early. He didn't wait. He didn't, as we say in my part of the country, he didn't lollygag. In other words, he didn't mess around for a while. He got up early. He got up early. Did Abraham understand? He did not. Did, do, did God let him in on the secret? He did not. But did Abraham obey? He did. He did. And he got up early. He saddled his donkey, took servants along with his son Isaac. And then I want us to see something. Who chopped wood for the fire? Did the servants chop wood for the fire? Who chopped wood for the fire? Abraham. Read further with me. 
Now, at some point when they left the servants, Abraham's an old man, older man by that time. So when they start going up the mountain, he has to put the wood on Isaac's back. Isaac, has, Isaac is young and strong. Abraham is not as strong as his son is. But I want you to see what else. Look with me at verse 6. Who carries the fire that will burn the sacrifice? Abraham. Who carries the knife that will slay Isaac? Abraham. Brothers and sisters, there are things that God leads us to through. There are things God leads us to. There are things God calls of us and asks of us that we cannot understand, that we do not understand, that will feel like it is ripping our hearts out, that will take something from us, that feels like, God, this is the dearest thing to me that I have. This is what I love the most outside of God. God, this is what is, this is my essence. Lord, this is my heart. This is my hope. This is my joy. This is my future. God, how can you ask this of me? This is a good thing. God, you gave me this. Maybe it's ministry. Maybe it's health. Maybe it's a relationship. God, this came from your hands. How can you ask this of me? But there are times in our lives if we are going to walk with God, if we are going to be people of faith, if we are ever going to go beyond babyhood and immaturity as Christians, we start there, but oh God, don't let us stay there. We keep on going. And if we're going to walk with God, there will be the time when God will call you to give him your Isaac and you will have to chop the wood, and you will have to carry the fire, and you will have to carry the knife, because God will be there, and God will do things, but God will not do this type of thing by himself in our lives. It will take something of us. It will take something from us. It will be a loss in our lives. It will be a sacrifice in our lives, but it has to be. It must be. It must be. It must be. And we see it in Abraham. And I say this this morning not to break our hearts, but to encourage us if that is where we are this morning. Or if that is something we are holding in our hearts that we have struggled with. And we say, God, why did you let this happen? God, how can this be? And what I say to you this morning, and we'll get into it more next week, and we, we're We've got about five or so more minutes this morning, but I want to go ahead and say it to you now. There are some things that some of you this morning, things that have happened to you, things that have occurred, that you think, God, how could you have let this happen? God, this has done something to me. How, how, can, how can you be in this? How can any good come out of this? It has broken me. It has crushed me. Or it may be something that's very good. And it may be something that's very wonderful in your lives. But what you have to do, whether it is something that has broken you or it is something that is dear to your heart, God says to you and to me, if we're going to go on with him, take that Isaac. Take that Isaac. Take that thing that you think, God, you can't be in it. And pick up the knife and pick up the fire, and you chop the wood, and you walk up Mount Moriah to the place that God has shown you, and you sacrifice it, and you give it to God. You give it to God. And you may say to me this morning, but pastor, you don't understand. God gave Abraham a choice. Abraham didn't have to take Isaac. He didn't have to chop wood. He didn't have to walk to Mount Moriah. But he did it. He had a choice. I didn't have a choice. It happened to me. Somebody did it to me. It may be health. It may be relationship. It may be marriage. It may be any one of these things. I didn't cause it. I didn't want it. I didn't ask for it. I don't have a choice. Beloved, beloved, I want to say something to you this morning. That's a lie from the enemy, and it will fill your heart with bitterness if you feel, I didn't have a choice in this. Because I believe we always have a choice. We always have a choice. Did you have a choice in allowing it to happen or not? Maybe not. But let, let me show you in the life of Abraham where the choice is. God in his wisdom and God in his goodness did not say to Abraham, Abraham, take Isaac, go outside, sacrifice him. Oh. Sometimes in a spurt of emotion, 
it is very easy to do that without thinking a lot, right? Okay, God, and we do it. God didn't let Abraham off that easily. What did God tell Abraham? Go to Mount Moriah. That was three days journey, almost 50 miles. It was for about 48 miles. Three days journey, go there and sacrifice Isaac. And every step, every hoof beat, every mile, every kilometer, every point of the way, Abraham had a choice to make. Am I going to do this or not? Am I going to go? You and I have a choice. What is our choice in times like this? Our choice is, God, what am I going to let fill my heart and my thoughts? God, how am I going to look at this? God, am I going to ask you and demand, God, why? Why? And honestly, we do that sometimes, don't we? Because we're human. We're human and our hearts are human. Abraham was human. He wasn't some holy being floating three feet above the ground. His feet walked in the dust up Mount Moriah as our feet do, as our feet do. He was a man as you and I are men and women. He had feelings as you, as you and I have feelings. But we have a choice. What is your heart going to be to God? Is there going to be bitterness? God, how? God, why? God, you could have, and you didn't. I will tell you really honestly, you may think it's just a small thing, Pastor Jennifer, as I told Pastor Renee this morning, and I don't want to go into a lot of details. This week was one of the hardest weeks I've ever gone through. I've been praying for that camp, this particular camp. I've been praying for this camp since last year's camp ended. I, it has been on my heart. It's been in preparation. But I don't want to make high things of that and make little things of the things that you go through because we've all gone through things like this. And our battle is, what is our attitude going to be? What is our heart going to be? Now, two more things and we're going to close this morning. And I want to show you two things that will help you. Look with me at this part. He tells the servants, stay here. We're going to travel further, the boy and I, but the boy at this time was not a boy anymore. And Abraham says, we will worship there, and then we will come right back. Had God told Abraham a secret at this point? It's just a test. No. No. I want you to look at the word worship this morning. These are the final two things we end with. The word worship is used here for the first time in the Bible to be meant in worship of man to God. First time that word is used. At the hardest point, Abraham says, in obedience, sacrifice, and submission, we will worship there. And I want to say to you this morning, my beloved brothers and sisters, we think worship is Sunday morning when we raise our hands and Chris leads us as he did this morning, and that is worship. But may I say to you, that's easy worship usually. We're here together. We're enjoying the presence of the Lord. There's the blessing of the Lord. We're all together. But God counts as worship, deep worship, precious worship, those times of obedience and sacrifice in your life and mine when it doesn't feel like worship to you. It hurts, doesn't it? It's painful. And your heart wants to say, God! But there's the other part of you, your will, your will. Because that's what God was dealing with with Abraham as well. It was his will. He had to choose each step of the way, didn't he? God, I will. God, I will. God, I do. We're going there a choice of the will. And it is those times that God looks at as worship in your life. That's how God looks at it. And so I say to you this morning, take that hard thing in your life. Take that question you have this morning. Take that demand, God, I don't understand. Take that, God, 
why haven't you answered my prayer? Or even, God, why did you let this happen? It broke my heart and ruined my life. Are you willing to take that, your Isaac? Say, God, I don't understand. But God, I worship you. God, here it is. Here it is. If you don't give me an explanation, God, I want one. I want one. But if you don't give me an explanation, I'm still going to obey you. I want an answer. But if you don't answer, I'm still going to walk up that mountain. God, I want you to change it. But if you don't, I'm still going to follow you. That's the worship that is most precious to the Lord. And then let me say one final thing as we close this morning. As they walk up the mountain, Isaac says, this is your encouragement as well this morning. Remember the question that Isaac asks his dad? What does Isaac say? Father? That's right. Here's the fire, here's the wood, here's the knife. Where's the lamb? Where's the lamb? What does Abraham say? In fact, is it the next verse? It's right there. What does Abraham say? God will provide. God will provide. And what I want to say to you is this. Some of us are dealing with things that we think, God, I cannot get through this. I will not make it. Lord, it's overwhelming me. And what I want to say to you this morning is this. A word from God for you this morning. God will provide. He will provide. An answer? It may not be an answer. An explanation? It may not be an explanation, but it will be what you must have to make it through. It will be what you need to obey. It will be what you need to offer up willingly, though with great pain, the sacrifice that he asks of you. God will provide. God will provide. God will provide. Lord, we thank you this morning. And I, I invite you just to, just to give to the Lord this morning. I think it takes longer than just a couple of minutes here at the end of this service. But just take a first step this morning and then get alone with God. God, oh Lord, thank you so much that you didn't let Abraham be a super saint that floated above the troubles of this world. But you let him go through this. And through him, we are blessed. We're blessed with Isaac, with Jesus, and we're blessed with someone who obeyed and walked up Mount Moriah with his son, his only son, the son he loved, Isaac. Lord, we bring to you our Isaacs this morning. We do. And we worship you with our Isaacs. I bring you my questions. I bring you my heart. I bring you my why. Why me? Why not? And God, here's my choice this morning. Here's my choice this morning. God, I will not let my heart get bitter. God, I will not blame you or say it's your fault. God, why didn't you? God, I'm going to submit to your hand in a situation I do not understand in a place where I do not yet have answers. I worship, I worship you this morning. And oh God, I don't know if I can make it or not. Would you provide? Would you be my Jehovah Jireh? My Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you, beloved.